Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Sorry about the light, it's actually the middle of the day. I don't know who I've become, it's the middle of the day and I'm filming, I'm not filming at 3 a.m. So, but I don't know how to not, I've, I, don't, I, didn't, I don't think I even knew what overexposure meant until literally the other day when I Googled it. But anyway, for today's video, we have, we are going to look at YouTuber films because I watched a bunch of them. I watched eight of them, eight of the worst youtuber films i have my own official tier rating list system that i came up with myself s a b d c e f s for shit a for awful b for bad c for crap d for doo doo e for exceeded expectations little rogue one in there and f for f u but before we get into that a message from today's sponsor this video is sponsored by skillshare Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes and members across 150 countries. Wow, I didn't even know that many countries existed. Hopefully there's a Skillshare course in geography. All these people and countries come together to take the next step in their creative journey. It's a place to get inspired, learn new skills and put them to work in creative ways. Skillshare want to make the creative life possible for everyone all around the world. Yay, globalization. I have an interest in joining Skillshare because I'm constantly on this journey, this development of growth and discovery. I'm always seeking ways to level up my skill set, either for creativity or for businesses or for my side hustles. And Skillshare allows me the place and the platform to do that. If you have a specific skill, that you'd like to develop, then Skillshare is the perfect place to start. From photography, to illustration, to graphic design, to art, to creative writing, the list just goes on and on and on and on and on. There are lots of benefits to Skillshare. Firstly, it's ad free. So you won't need to be listening to advertisements like this one that I'm doing right now. There are also new premium classes launched every week. So there's always something new to learn. The entire catalogue is now available with Spanish, French, Portuguese and German subtitles. Fantastic, inclusive. We love to see it. Now you all know me, you know how much of a writer I am. So to help kickstart <laughs> me and my productivity when it comes to writing, I'm going to be taking the Creative Writing for All, a 10 day journaling challenge by Emily Gould, who is a writer on the Skillshare site. So if you're interested, please check out Skillshare today. And if you use the special link in my description, you will get one month absolutely free. It's very unique. So make sure you take advantage of it. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get on with it. So the first film that I watched, yeah, was Fred. Fred the movie, first of the lot. And what a film to start with. This film is garbage, pure, undulated is that even a word it is now garbage the plot what plot where is the plot i can't find it oh here it is so fred the movie was originally released on nickelodeon because clearly kids don't get enough of a hard time these days if i don't get any food in my body then there's gonna be no blood in my head and then my head might ball because there's no blood in it This film is an insult to cinema. It's about that guy from YouTube, Fred, you know, I'm Fred, ah! oh my God, Judy, ah! wah, 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 wah. That's a little snippet of what this film is like. I'm just gonna. And he does that, and he keeps doing it. Sorry, and guys. Going by, it's going by, and, he, and he's going. He's apologising to the engineers <laughs> and the listeners. <laughs> sorry, Nigel. No, no, I'm sorry. How long this? Okay, fine. No, no. no, we, no we've here, got, we've got the message. No, 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 you, you can stop now. No, no. No, you can I give stop. You an now. Example. I might fade you out. Five seconds. I might fade you out. <laughs> Stop, stop, fade him out. That was fine. So in this film, Fred is played by Judy. What? What did I just say? 
So in this film, here's, here's the plot, here's the plot. Fred is in love with his next door neighbour and schoolmate called Judy, who is played by none other than Pixie Lot. Yeah, I don't know either. Maybe the X Factor wasn't on that year. He's in love with her. She moves house. There's also this neighbour called Kevin. We'll get to him in a minute. It's Kevin. Oh, okay, what are you going to Judy's house for a little play day, huh? How are you guys gonna do that? She moves house and then he tries to find her house to go hang out with her because he thinks that they're going out or not really, whatever. But that's it. That's the whole film. Him traveling to her house. Of course, that and... Stop. So if you hate your eardrums, then this is the film for you. I mean, my God, it has an approval rating of 0% on Rotten Tomatoes. I have literally never seen that before because usually you will get at least one idiot who will say for the sake of it, no, this film, it's critically, it's very good. It's a very good film. You'll always get one person, right, who just doesn't know what they're talking about. No, unanimously, Everyone thinks this film is terrible. This film is terrible. It's not enjoyable in any shape or form or capacity. I couldn't even laugh at it in a this film is so bad, it's funny and good kind of way. I couldn't enjoy it, just didn't. John Cena is also in these films. For so these films, there's three of them and John Cena features in all of them. What person told John Cena years ago? that he should get into acting because I would like a few stern words with said person. What are your talents for? I, I, I'm a good singer. No! Ow! The main antagonist in this film is a geezer called Kevin, whose mouth is so dry when he talks that you can see his lips peeling apart. You know when some people's mouths are so dry, the saliva has gone like white and almost solid and I'm gonna make myself throw up his mouth it looked like that in several because he's always yelling at Kevin there's so there's several moments where you sort of see the sort of like globs of saliva mate someone just give this guy a glass of water so Fred turns up at Judy's house and she's having a party and he is humiliated by all the popular kids and for once I'm not against bullying Kevin In retaliation, Fred then throws his own party where he invites no one except for his best friend because he has a best friend somehow. And then they make a video of the fake party and they edit it to make it seem much more cooler and epic <laughs> than it actually was. This part of the film is told via a montage and this montage goes on for so much longer than is comfortable or necessary. It goes on for about eight or so minutes. And somehow this video goes viral of this epic party. It gets tens of tens of views and this makes him popular at school. And then he, he and Judy date or something. I don't remember. I've tried to scrub this from my memory, but that is the film. It was so dull. Nothing really happened. I didn't care about any of the characters. So there were no stakes for me. I wasn't invested in this. It was awful. Zero out of 10, F you rating next on the list is fred 2 yep the first fred film seemingly did so well they went back for another round so i watched fred 2 because i hate myself that's why i'm doing this video because it's a form of self-loathing not so fun fact about fred 2 i couldn't actually find the film anywhere couldn't watch it in the uk on netflix amazon other streaming sites anywhere even Googling watch Fred 2 online slash nearest therapist office came up with nothing. Even the sites where it's like, you know, pay a couple quid, nothing. I had to watch this whole film via five to eight minute clips a piece on YouTube. Some Fred fan made channel re-uploaded this film. And yes, it looked like it was recorded 
on a potato. It was like 144p quality at best. And yet, I really felt that it added something to the experience, not being able to see what I'm watching. It really like made some ambience, you know what I mean? So in this film, there's no Judy. Pixie Lot clearly had better things to do that year, like burning money in front of the homeless. Oh yeah, that's right, Pixie Lot is a Bullingdon boy. You heard it here first. Not really, please don't sue me. Right in the beginning, a child pees in Fred's mouth. So I'm very glad that the bar got a bit higher with this film. Now, something really horrible and peculiar happened to me during the creation and scripting of this video. I inexplicably found myself starting to enjoy this film. I also did everything in the wrong order, so I don't know if I already mentioned that. I was going to do this video in order of worst IMDb rating in that movie database. IMDb, yes. <laughs> yeah, good, good memory, me. So, Fred 1, Fred 3, Fred 2. That's the order I watched these films in. And then I realised when I got to The Thinning 2 and 1, watching them in that order was just stupid, so we're doing things my way. So watching Fred 3, I found myself not hating it. And by the time it got to Fred 2, I... I think my brain had melted so much at that point. I found this film funny in places. I don't know. I'm not gonna, I don't have to justify myself to you lot actually. Hume is subjective. I don't know if it was a, this is so bad, it's funny kind of thing. I don't know. Was I being ironic? I'm not sure. So in this film, Fred gets a new neighbor who also replaces his beloved music teacher at the school. But Fred thinks that this bloke is a vampire because that is how logic runs in the Fred universe. <laughs> You know these films have worn me down when I tell you how hard I laughed at him screaming here. His screams pierced my brain and turned it into jelly. So watching these clips on YouTube did have its pitfalls. I believe one part was entirely missing and the clip for part two actually started buffering. Everybody had fun on that year. It was actually really nice. Mm -hmm. This means that someone screen recorded the film, saw that it was buffering and thought, screw it, I'll just put it up anyway as it is. Curiously as well, they uh, had turned off the comments for that clip. I reckon they got a little bit of heat from the Fred fandom over that one. Fair play. Fred has another potential love interest in this film. Unfortunately, I can't suspend my disbelief that much. This isn't fanfiction.net. Draco times Hermione. I can see it. He does say something about seeing her knickers in Goblet of Fire. Oh my God, read another bloody book. Aleasy easy. Carlisle times Charlie, more believable than Edward times Bella. Fred times anyone, get real. No, not having it. Not, not in this universe, not in the multiverse, no. But then there's a bit where the love interest, her name is uh, Talia. She's a ghost. Did that crow just... Talia? Oh my damn it! What if Talia is a ghost? What's that noise? I am a ghost, Fred. Where, where are you from? I was born in ancient times. There's a whole sequence about how the female potential love interest is actually a ghost, but then it's it's literally never brought up again. It's I don't think it's ever referenced again. It was just a random quirky bit. If I want to watch randomness for the sake of it, I'll just smoke a bifter and watch the My Boosh. Welcome to the Mirror World! Lol, JK. I don't smoke weed. I'll just eat loads of CBD. Lol. I'm an idiot. If I want randomness, I will just drink Capri Sun and watch the Mighty Boosh. It turns out that Talia, the ghost, is actually Kevin's sister and Fred has never ever noticed this even though they've been living next to each other for all of Fred's life. There's a little bit where the old music teacher also comes out of a pancake. <laughs> Mrs. Wilson! What? 
I can't provide you of more context than that because that's all the context that the film provided me with. There's then this clip where Devlin, the music teacher, the new one, the potential vampire, is a mosquito man and he drinks Fred's blood. This is truly horrifying. You got anything to drink? Like all of your blood? <laughs> How it feels to chew five gum. Jeez, that's a little inappropriate putting a vampire on a children's cereal box, don't you think? Wait a minute, that's it! The umbrella in the sunlight? The burying stuff in his backyard? Kevin's new haircut? Mr. Devlin is a vampire! This bit is kind of funny. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend to be outraged at how bad these films are. They are very stupid, but that's the point. And maybe that's part of the charm. After all, who doesn't at this age still enjoy watching SpongeBob SquarePants or Fairly Odd Parents? And vampires? They turn everyone else they know into vampires too! Twilight deleted scenes. I'll surrender. Not! Fred! <laughs> oh my god. It actually is Twilight. Well played, Fred. Well played. Well, that sounds wonderful. Mom! You can't go! You, you haven't hired me a babysitter! Fred, I leave you alone all the time, like every day. But tonight! Tonight it's going to be dangerous! Don't wait up. I'll have you home by 8.30. Oh, come on. Let's not stop the party before it even gets started. <laughs> Put these in something moist. Fred's mum, I realised, during watching this, it's very much like Meredith from The Office. Merci beaucoup. Oh, fancy. You certainly know how to show a girl a good time. Well, I looked at a website. The music teacher goes on a date with Fred's mum and the whole sequence is fantastic. Merci beaucoup. Why is that funny? Oh, that's good. Refreshing. I've become something of a water snob, and that is really dynamite. Good evening. There's also this very random WWE match <laughs> that must have actually been filmed at real life WWE match. But if you look closely in the background, no one, not a single person in that audience is happy about it. Face their deadliest opponents yet. Human is a match for the strength of the undead. Except a WWE superstar. I was going to say that. If you'd let me finish, that was going to be the end of my sentence. John Cena. Did I even explain what he so John Cena plays Fred's dad? In but like his imaginary dad version, right? He's not paid enough to do these films. So why? Is he doing this? Nickelodeon must have some serious dirt on him. What did he do? Appear on Epstein's flight list? I can't think of anything else as to why he would willingly consent to being in these films. I will say though, if they're doing their own stunts in this WWE sequence, then fair enough. Now, I didn't actually trust Talia's intentions with our boy Fred. I did think at several points that she was set up to do this by Kevin to play a mean trick on Fred. Fred spends the entire movie trying to prove to everyone else that the music teacher is indeed a vampire. And when I tell you that I was invested in the lore at this point, do you know how hard it is to engage my attention span? Truly, I got tested for it recently. I actually have ADHD. Makes so much sense why I find everyone insufferably boring. No, I don't want to invalidate myself actually. Everyone is insufferably boring apart from myself and clearly Fred the movie too. Night of the Living Fred. <laughs> However, Fred succeeds where many have failed before. He engaged my attention in this film. God help us, God help me, God save my soul. So he gets invited for dinner at Devlin's because Devlin wants to get to know him and just prove to him that he's not some sort of weirdo. But Fred finds a weird butcher's room full of hanging meats and swords. But 
Plot twist, yeah. This, I thought, was a stroke of genius. The teacher isn't a vampire. He's a career boo. What is this? This is steak. Steak? Mm-hmm. For bulgogi. Korean barbecue. Fun word, right? Bulgogi. He's a wee boo for Korea. It's incredible. So why are you so interested in Korean food? Well, it brings back good memories of when I was a kid. My dad was in the army. For a while, I was stationed in South Korea. We used to eat it all the time. But when I was 10, my parents got divorced and I moved back here with my mom. I'm surprised they didn't find posters of BTS up in his house or something. At that, I thought, and this is quite a controversial statement that I've made, but I thought, and I quote, this is the best film I've ever seen. What a shocking twist. I didn't see it coming. There's a whole little sequence about how they're going to eat kimchi for dinner and Fred thinks it's an actual person called kimchi and they go to the garden to dig up the kimchi which has obviously been fermenting under the ground but Fred really thinks that they're digging up a corpse to eat the corpse of kimchi it's just brilliant it's incredible so Fred and Devlin bond but unfortunately everyone sees the live stream and they show concern and care for Fred but they think that the teacher is a freak not a vampire no they think he's a vampire yeah they end up thinking that he is actually a vampire somehow and then Devlin decides he's going to move out the area because he's fed up with just being like quirky and unique and no one understanding him. Fred then decides to convince people that he is the vampire so Devlin can stay. It's A star logic, just logic that I've become accustomed to being really deep into the, into the Fred universe. succeeds but Devlin leaves anyway RIP except at the end he decides to take out Fred's mum for one last date and Fred notices it's getting a little chill ski maybe it'll snow ski oh, you're so fun ski here let me get the door that oh. he doesn't see Devlin's reflection in the mirror <gasps> Devlin was a vampire all along what a twist. This is honestly the best film of all these eight films. Rating E, exceeded expectations. <laughs> now let's get on to Fred 3. At this point in the scripting, I wasn't as enamored as I was with Fred 2, but this is when I started to find that I was enjoying it. So Fred Free is about our boy Fred going off to a really bad summer camp and having to survive all of the hijinks there. There's a lot of singing in this film and the lip sync is noticeably bad. All right, everyone, this is a big finish, so let's really make it count. And I actually watched this properly via some streaming site, not through clips on YouTube. So it wasn't an issue with someone recording the screen and then re-uploading it and the frame rates being off or whatever. The lip syncing is actually noticeably bad in this film, enough that all of Fred's lines seem to be slightly out of sync with his lips, which is quite off-putting once you notice it. However, it did take me three films to realize it's probably not his actual voice in the first place. As in, he's not doing that voice during the scenes. They are editing his voice and lines in post. But even then, I did assume that they would use his actual audio within the filming and just mess around with it during post in the edit. But it looks so badly synced in this film, I wonder, do they have him in a recording studio afterwards dubbing over his lines? I don't know. It just feels like watching Squid Game with the English dub. Grandma? Don't you ever call me that! After watching all the Free Fred films, I'm going to have to watch the Human Centipede trilogy to cleanse my soul. I think Martha, who is Fred's best friend, changed the actress in this one. I don't care enough to look it up though. Just tell me in the comments below. School is finished. Fred is going off to his summer camp and yes, John Cena is in this again. I'm glad you found me, Dad. Yeah. I could really use some cheering up. That's what I'm here for, son. Life throws you a problem. You just gotta put it in a headlock and hold on. Take that problem 
And you just gotta body slam that problem and clean. The camp that Fred goes to is called Camp I Wanna Pee Pee. Which is probably not very PC now I think about it. But all I wanna know is where's Camp I Wanna Die Die? The camp slogan is I wanna pee pee on all of you. Nickelodeon, are you good? Who wrote this? Dan Schneider. So he meets his campmates and they are all literally like 12 years old. Hey, name's William, but everyone around here just calls me Magoo. Hey, I'm Fred. Nice to meet you, Fred. Welcome to camp I want to pee pee. Uh, this is Fred. He's new to camp, so go easy on him, okay? Hello? Oh, that's Chatter. Don't mind him, he never talks. That one over there is Spoon. She's always eating. And I mean, always. Oh, well. Last but not least, there's Dig. What's up? Why do they call you Dig? Because I dig holes. I guess that makes sense. And I realized when watching this that Fred's actor's age in this film is 18 in Fred Free. He was 16 in the first Fred film and 12 when he started YouTube. I'm not, look, I don't, I'm not up to date with actual Fred's YouTube channel. I didn't know this. But then that made me think if he was actually a teenager when he started doing these, this YouTube channel, 12. And then he was so successful at 16 that he got his own film. I've wasted my life. I stopped focusing on this film for a second or five minutes or something, I don't remember, like I said, ADHD. Oh yes, get ready for this new arc where I blame all of my negative behaviours and traits on being neurodivergent. Yes! Finally, an excuse. I'm kidding. It does make sense, bloody makes sense though, doesn't it? I didn't think I was even going to share that <laughs> with, you, with you guys. Didn't think I'd ever bring it up, but girls get undiagnosed at a lesser rate or get diagnosed at a lesser rate because that's two double negatives in it than boys so just saying i'm not lazy i'm finally validated what was i talking about case in point but yeah anyway i stopped focusing on the film for a second and when my focus did snap back to the film uh they were looking for a rat hole which is a rude way to talk about fred's mum the effects in this film admittedly are terrible did they not make enough money from the first two did they spend all of the budget on getting John Cena involved. I need to know, Nick Lodium. There is a conspiracy afoot at the camp and it's up to our hero Fred to work it out. So they're doomed. And every day more and more kids are getting sick from some mysterious I'll illness. Twice a day, okay? We even witnessed the staff putting weird blue pills in the food. Now are you sure the kids won't be able to taste this? Oh, I'm positive. These are completely odorless and tasteless. Good, here. Why don't you try it out? I've stumbled across something very dangerous and I'm a- Ow! What's surprising though is this and the second has way more plot than the first one, which I feel made it a more enjoyable viewing experience because the first one was just so boring. I was like, okay, he's going to Judy's house. Why do I care? I don't care. Oh yeah, that's it. Pixie Lot, she kept singing throughout the- like, It's clearly Pixie Lot just did that film to try to further her singing career because all she did was sing and there was lots of singing in all of these. Campers at Camp I Wanna Pee Pee are getting sick and Fred thinks that the camp leaders are giving the kids pills that turn their brains into Swiss cheese so the camp leader can eat them because he's a giant mutate, mutated mutant rat monster. That's when it's feeding time for Floyd Sparkmeyer. Because you see, our innocent head counselor isn't so innocent after all. He's not even human. He's a giant, mutant rat creature. I did not make any of that up. That is genuinely what Fred thinks is going on. And somehow that is more plot than the first film. At one point, he eats poisonous berries, hallucinates and begins rapping. And it was at that point, I wanted to die. Hey there, Fred. My name is Fred, I'm sick in the head. Mess with me and you're gonna see red. F to the R to the E to the D. When you meet me, I think you're gonna pee your pants, that's it. I'm legit, yes, see, I'm Fred Figahor, damn it. The rat hole turns out to be a den to hang out in. It was just slang for, okay. Feels very Stranger Things, this part of the film. And the pills are just multivitamins. 
to keep the kids healthy whilst they eat their gruel. Kevin, the antagonist from the first two, is in Camp Superior, which is the nice fancier camp that Fred initially wanted to go to. Kevin is the Vitali of the Fred universe. I don't say that lightly because Vitali terrifies me. They, they keep dancing and yet somehow the film grew on me. It's not a good film by any stretch of the imagination, but because it's more tolerable than the first, this scene, do you know what? I think I did. I think I did this thing where I don't really like anyone or anything. And I find most things really annoying when I first come across them. Some of my favorite YouTubers are people that when I first found their channels, I thought that they were so, actually, Here's a good example, Russell Brand. You all know how much I love Russell Brand. Uh, when I first saw him on Big Brother's Big Mouth, I hate, hated him. I was very young, but I hated him. I thought, why is he acting that way? Why is he, what an attention seeker, Blah. And then after a month, I was back combing my hair, I was talking like him, I morphed into this today, you know? I find that I do this thing where I just, I'll, I'll really dislike something and then I'll, ironically start to watch it and then I'll end up enjoying it and then I'll like the thing. And I think that that is what happened with these films. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. Camp Superior and Camp Pee Pee have a tournament together. There's a burping contest. So forget whatever negative thing I said before, because this is high quality entertainment. Vitali raps. Yo, yo, I love to rap. Rapity rap. Oh, rap, oh, rap. Catch you in a trap. Give you a big slap. I've got a map, a cap, a snap. Pat, pat, pat. Make him stop. But then Fred starts singing, so I don't know where to look. Well, our lake is green, our bunk's unclean. Safety here is unattainable. However, I didn't hate this movie. Would I recommend this movie to anyone? No. Will I watch it ever again? Also no. But it wasn't totally diabolically bad. Therefore, it gets a rating of E. Next up, Smosh the Movie. If you're on YouTube, I assume you know who Smosh are, the former dynamic duo who did like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles theme song thing and the Pokemon theme song thing. It's probably all the Smosh videos I ever watched, but I thoroughly enjoyed them when I was about five. Yeah, my new Frisbee. Yes. Smosh the movie. 20 minutes into this, I got bored, distracted, and decided to watch the entirety of the original Last House on the Left 1972 edition, as opposed to watching this silly film about two YouTubes getting up to hijinks. I watched a gross exploitation film from the 70s. So what does this say about how dull and unengaging this film is? If I have that urge to go watch people getting murdered, what does that say about you, Smosh? Not about me, don't look at me, about you two. This film is directed by Alex Winter, which is really conflicting for me and it kind of, it hurt my soul a little bit because I love Bill and Ted. Duh, of course I do, but I didn't love this. This is most none. Not heinous. Smosh the movie is about Smosh, Ian and Anthony being non-YouTube famous, working regular jobs, etc. Anthony has a haircut that costs $40 or something. You know, normal stuff. They have an invite to their school reunion, but a YouTube video of Anthony begins to get tens of tens of views. It resurfaces. It's this embarrassing video of him singing a song and trying to, no, singing like he was rapping the Pokemon rap and he dedicates it to his high school crush, but then he fails doing a backflip and a microphone goes up his butt. That's the caliber of film we're talking about here, yeah, the caliber of writing. So they decide to go to YouTube HQ to remove the video as Anthony doesn't want to be embarrassed in front of his high school sweetheart yet again. At YouTube HQ, they jump through a portal to go through various YouTube videos to try to delete the offending footage. Your best bet is to change the video from the inside. Oh! And 
I feel like there was such a missed opportunity with this one to just make it a stoner film. It would have worked so much better. Yes, the plot is nonsensical, but that can work if you just rebrand it as a stoner film, chuck in a few joints, it works. Look at Tenacious D, The Pick of Destiny. Mad plot, it works. Harold and Kumar, all of them, it works. Rework it, make it a stoner comedy. It would have been so much better because I feel like it wanted to be that. Chuck in a cameo with Neil Patrick Harris. I don't know, do anything, do anything except this. I doubt YouTube would be okay with a stoner comedy representing the website because it would probably go against their family friendly values. Even though there's literally a joke in which Steve YouTube, who is the CEO of YouTube, gets his penis out because lol, pee pee, well funny. Steve YouTube, more like Steve Schneider. <laughs> so it's like, if you've got these weird noncy jokes in there, why not just go the whole hog, the whole porker, the whole wiener, and just make it a stoner comedy? You'd have tapped into the stoner market. I mean, it is set in LA where weed is legal, right? Was it? I don't know, was it? Am I high right now? Can't remember. I mean, the portals jumping scene alone feels very Bill and, it feels very Bill and Ted, the 1987, let's see, Bill and Ted's excellent adventure. Excellent, most heinous. 1989, I was wrong. It's my ADHD. That's why I was wrong. The fact that the portal jumper scene alone felt very 1989, as opposed to 2000 and whenever the hell this came out, is a bit of a red flag in itself. But I feel like this wanted to be a Bill and Ted film, but can't come close. But maybe that is my internal bias showing because I know that Alex Winter directed this film. So maybe, I don't know, tell me what you think. On to the acting and stuff. I noticed that Ian is not convincing at all. It's like he can't emote properly. Uh, how am I supposed to get home? Just take a cab or something. I'll be home after my shift. Do you have a name for your butt? Great talk, Dad. Anthony, I felt, had more range. And I'm not saying he was fantastic by any means, um, but Ian just, it wasn't convincing. For, sorry. I feel like Simon Cowell buzzing someone off the X Factor, watching, watching them cry over how their nan always wanted them to go on X Factor or whatever. Bah, too bad, Ian. See you later. He does get beaten up by the epic mealtime dude, though, so. You little bastard. <laughs> they go inside YouTube and they can interact with the videos, with the people inside the videos. So Jenna Marbles is in it, but she's being really aggressive, which felt like a culture shock. One of the YouTube videos that they go into is a furry party and a rabbit starts twerking. It feels like that scene from The Shining. Stone Cold Steve Austin is also in this. Ever seen? Go out and get yourself some stone cold creamy cream, and that's the bottom line. <gasps> stone cold Steve Austin. What is it with wrestlers and YouTuber films? Someone please explain to me. Halfway into this film, I had to note that I hadn't laughed once. I laughed more at Fred. Two and three, not one. I laughed more at the last house on the left when the police officers fell off of the truck. The evil dojo man from the Karate Kid he fell off the truck. I laugh more at that than Smosh the movie. The script is not funny, it's not good, it's not smart. It turns out that Ian uploaded the video under the guise of, oh, but it's funny though, but actually it's because Ian feels like a loser because his character is a loser. And he gets mad that Anthony changes, you know, because you just changed, man. You got a haircut, you got a job, you changed for the worst. Like, that's terrible character motivation. The film also felt really slow. It was a slog to get through. It was very predictable that Steve YouTube would end up to be evil 
but then also get trapped within YouTube itself. That was obviously going to happen. The effects were also, I think they, they green screened a few bits, but also it wasn't very good. I don't know. So they find the offending footage, but then Anthony and Ian end up fighting their video cells, selves. It has a butterfly effect, right? Because they leave YouTube and they get really rich and successful from it because people think that they did a Clone Wars thing. They think it was some cool effect. So I don't know. Somehow inexplicably, they get successful and rich for acting like complete idiots. Anthony gets a harem, but then he gives it all up because he wants to see his high school sweetheart. And then they have a butler and Ted, Theodore Logan's dad is in this film as a butler. Hell if I know. Anthony's wannabe love interest. So they go to the high school reunion. The wannabe love interest is there, but she's, you know, upset that Anthony's changed because he's successful and has an even better haircut. She only liked him when he barely showered. I don't understand the point and the message of this film. What is the message of this film? Never try to achieve? Never shower? I don't know. I did think at this point, because he goes onto the stage to prove to her that he's still the same guy. I did think at this point, oh my God, he's gonna shove the microphone up his ass to prove to her that he's not changed or whatever. But no, they don't do that, thankfully. Instead, they accidentally kill someone and this makes the high school sweetheart love him. Horrid. Rating A. A for awful. Terrible. Next up is Smiley, featuring Tobuscus and Shane Dawson. Smiley is supposed to be a modern day slasher film. It plays on the urban legend tropes, but a more modernized internet version, where if you type in, I did it for the lulls over an Omega ripoff, like live chat with someone, then a bloke wearing skin for a face, all faces are made of skin, will kill the other person, stabbing them or whatever. It's essentially an internet bloody Mary. The film follows a sweet American, good girl, God-fearing, calls her father, daddy, tee hee, raindrops on roses and whiskeys on kittens. Whiskers on kittens, not whiskey on kittens. Stop getting the kittens drunk. College student called Ashley. You're sure you don't want to be closer to your class? Daddy, campus is literally a block away. You don't have to worry so much. Um, father, I... It's part of my job. Daddy. Her roommate, who she just meets, invites her to a party. The party is a B anonymous 4chan, but yes. Yeah, that happened. Party, Shane Dawson is there. He's looking terribly out of place. He gets called a pedo bear and has stuff thrown at him and then gets kicked out of the party. Wow, life sure does imitate art, doesn't it? I did at this point think, I bet he's the smiley. And I was kind of right. Very predictable, these films. The film formula is one by one, a group of students are picked off by the smiley killer and ignored by the police for wasting time because they're not going to take reports of a... Bloody Mary rip off seriously. The action is interspersed with scenes of this nihilistic teacher giving lectures going on and on about how life is pointless, so let's all just flip or something. He definitely has Nancy vibes. Paris from Gilmore Girls is also in this. Someone please make Amy Palladino make a year in the life part two so Paris doesn't have to debase herself by appearing in YouTuber films. She also fittingly plays a psychiatrist. I mean, that's terrible, obviously, but I tried to do it and nothing happened. Do you want them to die? No. I mean, I wanted to be right, but I didn't want to kill anybody. You have to really want it. I did at one point think, well, maybe the teacher is smiley. Didn't really know what to expect. Shane Dawson has a kissing scene with Ashley. It's very awkward and boring. There's a few jump scares littered throughout this. The weird teacher at one point fully insinuates with Ashley that they should bang because life is pointless. The film culminates in Ashley slowly going crazy of paranoia of the smiley killer because she and her roommate did the I did it for the lulls on a random person on Amigo. This is important. This is important, right? Important plot point. So she's riddled with this guilt that she caused some urban monster to kill someone. So, and as the, the B party friend group are getting picked off, she gets more and more paranoid. She gets put on medication by the psychiatrist because they think that she's delusional. She and her roommate decide to call the smiley onto her, onto Ashley, so she can kill the smiley killer. But then lots of smileys appear. So she jumps out of the window in terror, seemingly to her death. 
Then the smileys. Up until this point, I didn't think this was the worst thing I've ever seen. Because I've seen a lot of like weird horror films, you know? I watched a Serbian film. Somehow the twist in this was worse than the twist right at the end of a Serbian film. <laughs> kind of joking. The smileys reveal themselves, right? to be the characters who were supposedly killed off by the smiley killer, including there's this babysitter right at the beginning who was killed by the smiley killer. This was all one giant conspiracy just to make Ashley, a random girl, no, none of them knew, go crazy and supposedly end game. There is zero motivation, for zero reason, zero motivation, except if, if it was all a conspiracy and none of them actually died, what about the random person on the live chat, Omegle, that they accidentally killed with the smiley killer? Forget about that one, did ya? For the laws. For the laws! Shane Dawson goes from this bumbling nerd to somehow the evil mastermind talking in his like soft lilt of a voice. Blech. It's chocolate rain. Shane Dawson being the evil genius all along is such a disappointing twist because like a Crest sandwich would be more intimidating than Shane Dawson. I'm more intimidating than Shane Dawson. Even back in his helmet hair days, doesn't impress me at all. It just, it feels like this is a vanity project for Shane. For him to turn around and be like, aha, I was only pretending to be a dorky, nice guy before, hmm. So after they do this, the 4chan leader bloke and Ashley's roommate have a chat and Ashley's roommate is like, are we bad people for doing this? She's really, really, really dead. Are we bad people? I don't know, sweetie. You randomly gaslit Ashley, who you didn't know before, into believing that a supernatural being was killing all of your friend group off, which caused her to be so consumed by fear and guilt that she went onto medication and then ended up jumping out of a window and apparently dying. And they did this literally just just for the lulls so yeah i would say you're not the best of people i wouldn't invite you around for tea and crumpets with the queen there is actually a post credit scene showing that ashley survived the fall out of the window probably best just to stay dead mate as the twist sort of rendered the film entirely meaningless and pointless, I'm giving this a rating of F U because it, it's just a waste of time. It's not good enough. There's just better things. Am I going to suggest watching a... No, no I'm, I'm not going to suggest watching that. Don't watch that film. There's different genres of horror films. So if you wanted to watch a slasher film with pot potentially a supernatural antagonist, literally watch any other film other than this. Hills of Eyes is better than this, even though it's not exactly the same category, but still. Airplane Mode. Airplane Mode is about Logan Paul having to fly to the other side of the world for sex because nobody wants to be with him in his home country. <laughs> On this same flight is a bunch of influencers going to an influencer con in Australia and a enraged, roided up Vitali who goes on a killing spree on the plane. Logan has to battle Vitali and safely land the plane. I'm only summarizing this one because I've done a whole video on it, which you can watch somewhere up on one of these sides if you so fancy, where I really delve into uh, the artistic merit of airplane mode. Vitali, I don't say this lightly, he's honestly the best thing about this film because it's believable that he would go on a rampaging killing spree a la Con Air. I do mean it when I say that he terrifies me. Vitali is like my smiley. He's like my Bloody Mary. I'm scared if I say his name too many times in this channel, he's going to appear in the background of this to get revenge. This film, it's, it's, just, it's rubbish. It's just rubbish. It's just loads of names trying to get their little two minutes of fame. Lele Pons is in it and she's just like screaming and being incomprehensible. Everyone is annoying in this, Logan Paul might be the least annoying person in this, but I don't even mind, like, to be honest, deal with it. I don't mind Logan Paul, I think he's all right sometimes. But I mean, look at this plot summary on Wikipedia, the bastion of all internet knowledge. As established in an earlier scene, brackets, for reasons which are unexplained, close brackets, Logan has the ability to read the minds 
of gay people. It's just a bad film and so for that reason I'm out. No, it's a rating B. So, The First Thinning, which for some reason I've written quite a lot about. The Thinning is more of a serious film to Logan Paul's acting repertoire. It's about a dystopian future in which to solve the overpopulation crisis, America annually kills off the bottom 5% in every classroom after a standardized test. This is a decent enough premise. Unfortunately, that's where it ends. It takes a whopping two minutes, but oh yes, Logan Paul is topless within two minutes. Amazing. Throughout this film, Logan looks really young and soulless, a bit dead behind the eyes. It's rather disarming. I've made a severe and continuous. He also always makes the same slightly concerned expression whenever the scene calls for any sort of shocked facial expression. He looks like he got acting lessons from Joey Tribbiani. He looks like he's having an interesting shit rather than being scared shitless at the dystopian nightmare or at his love interest dying or whatnot. The boy from American Vandal is in this, I forget which one. Some kids try to cheat the standardized test with high-tech equipment, but if they get caught, they are forced to <gasps> do the test anyway. In Battle Royale, when Nobu slightly pisses off Katano, Katano immediately has his throat explode via a detonator in front of his shocked classmates. That there is some stakes. Not, hey, you're trying to cheat, you're trying to run away, we're just gonna capture you and make you do the test anyway. I'm not calling for students to be brutally taken care of, but it just, it makes them less intimidating. Just kind of feels like, why, why don't they all just try and run away before? Because if they're just gonna get caught and dragged back, why don't they just, a few months before the test, just keep trying to run away, tunnel out of America, do something like, why don't they do that? They do the test and when the teachers call out those who fail, one boy tries to resist and fight the guards, but he gets beaten instead. And his screams of terror and pain are so poorly done, you'd mistake him for one of those girls who screams slightly when the light goes out in a classroom, not the screams of someone who is about to be murdered. No, 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 no. He's on the move! He's on the move! Hey, get him! Back row! Give him the sword! It's like a mild... Ah! Like he's seen a wasp, rather than he's about to be led to his death. Logan's love interest fails, and he doesn't have that much capacity for convincing emotional conflict, but he does have the believable physical capacity to wild out and attack people, which he does. So there's something, I guess. The film skips ahead. It's one year later and he is topless again. Talk about character consistency. The film shows little kids about to take their first test and they're showing cartoon propaganda about why the test is necessary for everyone's survival. And this could be suitable horrifying it is in some regard when you think about it yeah that that's really horrible it's grim it's nasty but it lacks a proper emotional punch because it's just not a very good film logan decides to fail his test on purpose because his dad is a governor who supports the thinning and he wants to teach his dad a lesson you go logan you show greg paul who's boss you show greg what happens when greg goes around kissing his son's mates so this bit i quite liked in a twisted way one of the teachers is exploiting their position and power by sleeping with a female pupil because he promises that he will get her exemption from the test, which of course he doesn't because he doesn't have that access or authority. And it's very clever because he's gonna get away with that scot-free. No one's going to be listening to the female student as they are put to death almost immediately. It's what the guard's gonna do, nothing. It was very twisted, that. I thought that was all right. Logan makes a video to his dad being really dramatic by being like, <laughs> it has all the sincerity of one of his apology videos. Father, I've made a severe and continuous lapse in my judgment. By the time you watch this, I will be dead. I am literally a better actor than Logan Paul. Where's my YouTube red film or series, whatever the hell this was. So his dad quickly intervenes and has his test results swapped with the smartest girl in the class, Lena. 
Everyone knows that she is smart, so when she is led away to be finned, she receives help from the teacher and from Logan because he realizes that something is wrong because he passes the test, which he failed on purpose. Logan manages to get Lena to escape with him and they crawl through the school's vents, but Logan falls through the vent into a swimming pool that's curiously really, really, really deep. It is revealed at some point when Lena is, I don't know, hacking into the mainframe by copying down the password to the root of modem or whatever, that Logan's dad also failed Logan's first girlfriend on purpose because he thought that she was a distraction for Logan, which is incredibly savage. He went from governor to actual straight up murderer. During these hijinks, the thinning keeps stopping and starting for all of the other students as they try to track down Lena. And I felt really bad for the other students because they must be on a roller coaster of emotions thinking, oh, maybe we'll get exemption. Oh no, we're gonna die. Da, da, da. That's too much stress to be put under. That's just mean. Besides Logan's dad, there's another antagonist and we know he's a bad guy because he has loads of scars on his face. What happened there? Looks like the cat scratched him. Did he try to steal lasagna from Garfield? What happened? With the help of Lena's friend, the boy from American Vandal, who is also a super hacker. What did Lena do then? Well, maybe, I think it's just he hacked it. Like he's the super hacker, he's Mr. Robot. They informed the press of corruption in the thinning, leaving the governor with no choice but to let Lena go and thin his own son to save his career. However, shock twists, the students don't die. They get given sleeping medication and wake up to be made into factory slaves for the evil corporation who runs the thinning, su like supplies all the guards and all the technology and stuff. What a cliffhanger. As I said, I feel like this film had potential and it had some interesting premise, but it's been done before and it has been done better by other, like just go watch Battle Royale, innit? This film, it felt like the first Purge because the first Purge feels quite cheaply done because you're just following this random family that you're gonna care about, this rich family during the, so I, I know the subsequent Purges were a bit more interesting than that. So this one, it feels like the first Purge. I mean, it's a bad film, but it's, it's tolerable, so it gets a rating of B. The Thinning 2. Fun fact, as I said earlier, I tried to make this video in a really stupid order, which meant I was gonna watch the second Thinning first until I realized, like five minutes into it, that it literally made no sense to me. So in the first five minutes of this film, I thought, oh my God, Logan's dead. They're showing his funeral. Why the hell am I watching this? Who are all these people? Why am I meant to care? I'm just here for Logan Paul, Logan for life. Another not so fun fact, because I went back to watching the first, before the second, I had to rent this film twice. I rented it the first time for like a five or whatever. I waited too long to watch the first thing first, which meant I had to end up giving Amazon twice times my money. I hope you're happy with your blood money, Bezos. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, at least I have context now and that context is boring. I want my fiver back. So Lena and American Vandal work out that there's a conspiracy going on and they decide to dig up Logan Paul's grave to check if his body is actually in there. And somehow they do not get caught digging up the grave of the governor's son or any grave in CCTV, oh, all this high tech technology, but CCTV, never heard of her. Don't know what it is. What's that? Logan Paul is at his new forever home in an underground factory. And antagonist in this, besides the governor for Lena, is this roided up bad boy in the underground system who pushes his way around the prison and frequently assaults Ellie. Ellie is Logan's girlfriend from the first film who isn't actually dead. She was also chosen to work in the underground factory. So I think some classes do die, some are set to work. And it's just a little bit Belair because it's like, okay, great, he's evil. He treats a woman like a possession and frequently assaults her. Never seen that before, never heard of it before. Show me something that I don't know, that I haven't seen before. It's just a bit like, oh, okay, great, great. Now I have to watch some, uh, now I need to watch a girl getting assaulted by an arse, like, okay, fine. Uh-oh, Scarface from the first film is back and he breaks Logan's leg for trying to escape. It's like misery, but a hundred times worse and his leg doesn't heal properly, what drama. I realized whilst watching this film that Logan has tried to punch his way out of every single problem and I don't think it's worked once in his favor. But on the plus side, it reminds me of the chief from Stranger Things who I adore, j'adore. The chief from Stranger Things solves problems with his fists.
What the hell are you talking about? I don't work with O'Bannon. I say O'Bannon, I meant... Okay. Punch first, ask questions later, and that's a motto that I can stand by. Yeah. So it turns out the mean boy has actually been sneaking into Logan's room at night to keep breaking his leg or hitting it or just damaging it. Logan also keeps getting topless. I m believe it might be in his contract to do this every possible chance. Lena accepts a super secret mission posing as the governor's something, I don't know, to aid him in winning the presidential election. She does this to ensure that her younger siblings get safe passage into a different country because they're gonna start their thinning soon. She decides to sneak into some woman's room to steal data about the underground factories, but to do so, she has to jump around rooftops like she's in the Matrix. Like that exact scene from Matrix 1 where Neo is trying to walk outside then he pisses out and gets captured by the agents. Mm -mm, no way, not believable. And she does it without wearing any shoes or socks as well. That would, uh, on concrete, that would hurt, no, not having it. So the bad boy keeps doing these underground cage matches just for the hell of it because he's like the leader of the underground tunnels, whatever. And I just realized it sounds like Tunnel Snake. It sounds like Butch from Fallout 3. Tunnel snakes rule. We're the tunnel snakes. That's us. And we rule, 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 rule. Logan beats the bad boy in a cage match, but he doesn't pulverize him to death when he gets the opportunity because he wants to be the bigger person. And I hate that. I hate that trope of, you know, we've had our differences and you've tried to screw me over every given opportunity. But now that I'm in like the winning up here and you're down here, I'm gonna show you mercy even though you never showed me mercy. Even though this guy has literally been sexually assaulting uh, your girlfriend for the better part of a year. No, not having it. And in showing mercy, the bad boy then tries to beat Logan up anyway, but Logan still wins. Like just old yell at him. Logan becomes the new leader of the underground, whatever. Lena gets the data and she trusts some other woman with it, but the woman betrays her, which anyone could see coming from a mile off because she is acting like, well, dodgy, mate. When people act dodgy, just don't trust them. Simple. I just solved almost every film conflict. Lena is almost killed, so she escapes to the American Vandal's house, but then he is killed in a blown up car bomb RIP. This film is a lot more ambitious than the first because the first mainly took place at a school. So I feel like this one had a lot more budget. I'm not sure how. I'm assuming money laundering, like every Adam Sandler film. The crazy betrayer lady falls down the stairs on her head and dies, lol rip. Logan and his girlfriend escape the factory, Abe's Odyssey style. But his dad wins the presidency, the governor becomes the president, okay, but also discovers that Logan is still alive. However, then some woman decides to arrest everyone that I don't know if it was everyone that was actively supporting the other candidate or everyone that um, vote, didn't vote for the governor. Because if, it, if it's like it, she, she arrests everyone who didn't vote for the governor, there is literally not enough police available for that. There's just not. It's just not believable. Maybe I watched that wrong. I don't remember, ADHD. It then ends on a cliffhanger of Logan, Lena and Ellie being arrested, but then saved by someone in the FBI who has the hots for Lena. And then he's like, we're going to war. Quite abruptly, it ends. Jack. We gotta go. Who are you? I'm FBI. Come on, there we go. We gotta go, now. Where? I'm going to war. Clearly they were gunning for a third finning film. So it could be like, cause this is the finning New World Order. I know the finning Mockingbird part one, part two, I guess they were going for, but that's never going to happen now because YouTube cancels doing films or something. So RIP Scarface man, you were a real one. <laughs> Rating C. Crap over bad, because it was like, it, it, it was more ambitious and it tried more, but it still fell short. And that is my YouTuber film review part one, because there's like 16 more of these buggers to get through. So if you enjoyed it, do remember to like, comment, subscribe. Really important that you do. Check out my podcast channel. I've had some good podcasts up there recently. Check out my third channel where I'm probably just gonna be complaining about Made in Chelsea for the next week or so. 
Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Thank you for you for hanging around. So without further ado, I guess, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.